All right, welcome back to MMG Invest. So, Jackson Hole, right? Pal, Trump, it's it's heating up. <laughs> um, we live today was a very very important t important day, and I said it would be right. And um, man, they're playing with fire. All right, well, first of all, let me get this out of the way. Then we're going to get into it. I'm going to talk about the implications of the Jackson Hole uh, speech Powell gave and uh, the trade war, Trump. I'm going to talk about something I haven't said. I'm just going to speak the truth because my, my channel's being censored at this point. So I might as well just come out and say what's really going on. Uh, first of all, this is not financial advice. Consult your financial advisor. I am not your financial advisor. Uh, place stops, have emotions out, stocks, equities, extremely volatile, extremely risky. Do not, do not invest anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. And um, go to my website if you haven't. <laughs> you know, if you would have listened to me when I first said to, you know, I'm buying gold silver mining stocks i mean i started accumulating back in uh 2016 so i'm like i'm rich <laughs> but um this is still just the beginning so uh i've been pretty right about this i don't think anyone else has called it like i have i really don't no one's timed it everyone else is a stopped clock who've been saying it for like decades but uh i timed it with ta uh, go to my website, watch this video, this is what you expect to get, and 10% um, discount for now. I, I shouldn't even have to give it a 10% discount. It pays for itself, literally. It pays for itself. Alright, so, um, and you're going to make more. I'm pretty confident. Uh, Alright. Let's, let's get, you know what? I'm going to rub this in your faces. Let's take a look at how things are really going for me and my uh, portfolio. Where is it? So, I started buying and accumulating in recent years. Now, just so you guys know my history, I bought mining stocks and all that my the first time around was uh 2009 right and that rally here 2009 I, I pretty much bought right when the price broke back above the previous high right over here on gold this is a gold chart weekly gold chart i bought around here and i enjoyed these gains but it was very late considering the entire decade-long bull rally in the 2000s because i was young i was you know i started college like back in 2004 um i didn't really have much money when i started uh i, I mean i did have money back then but i wasn't uh trading or investing back then i really started back in like 2007 and 8 and uh I bought physical and then I bought some mining stocks here and then I saw that the top was in and I got out in 2012 on this dip. All right. And this is just the price of gold. Now, mining stocks, gold silver mining stocks, if you would have bought them down here when when gold first started breaking out in 2002, you would have made life-changing money. Like you have never seen before. All right. And that's how I view where we are at right now. Okay. <clears throat> now. I started accumulating again. So I sold in 2012. I started accumulating in 2016. Right on this breakout. Actually it was the first month of 2015. Because that's when. Um what's her name janet yellen first started raising rates and i actually 
Well, I was listening to Peter Schiff, and I was looking at the charts, and I'm thinking, well, it can't go any lower, gold and silver, because mining costs are higher than the actual value of the metals they're mining, right? So I, just from that fundamental uh, perspective, and the fact that I've, I'm very engaged in the markets and what's going on, I knew that this the this would probably be the bottom. So I started accumulating down here, right? Started accumulating here. And then I traded ETFs here there here and there, right? During this entire time right here. And then on this dip right here, I accumulated again. This was in uh the beginning of 2018. I also accumulated a lot right around this time as well. So this is when I launched my website right here, right? Although some of my followers, since they've been following me since 2017, I told them to buy here, okay? If you would have listened to me, I mean, you are sitting fairly well, like really good right now. Like, you have beaten the stock market. You've beaten everything. You're doing the best right now on Wall Street, technically. All right? So, and then I urged everyone. I made that video. This is your last chance. So, if you go to my YouTube video, YouTube channel, I don't want to do it right now. I made that video with the clock, and it says, this is your last chance. And if you would have bought then, you would have caught this giant rally. And this is a weekly chart, right? So <laughs> this was like three, four months ago. Right? I mean, let's just, let's go to it. Let's go to my YouTube channel. If this would load. And, you know, I have a... Uh, a thousand consistent followers and I thought maybe a third of them uh, half of them would actually believe in me well that was wrong uh, but um if you guys just want to listen right where is it so this is my YouTube channel Here we go. One month ago, time is up. New gold, silver, bull market. This was, I was literally saying, this is your, this is the great dip buying opportunity, right? Now, prior to that, right, I was already, I was saying the same thing. Two months ago, I, you guys know, I, I've been just saying, listen, you need to just buy gold silver mining stocks because it's going to take off all right it was inevitable it's just basic math the fed has no choice but to cut rates to zero and start printing money and then they're going to come out with modern m monetary theory with helicopter money they're going to cut checks to everyone in the country you're going to see some crazy Keynesian, Venezuela, Weimar, Germany style inflation and money printing to get the bubble back up. Now, I'm going to talk about the Jackson Hole and all that in a second. I'm just, I'm telling you guys, like, we had a bull flag right here as well, right? You guys remember? I made this arrow like three months, two months ago, whenever this was. May. Okay, and this is what you guys really, really need to understand. So, here's just one of the stocks. This is a weekly chart. This is just one of the stocks. I bought it down here. But when I came out with the research and the website, right? Um, if you would have bought right when I... And I rushed the website. I I rushed it. I wanted it out so you guys could take advantage of it. And some of you did. But not as many people as I thought. 
Now, if you took advantage of it and bought in like that week or that month that I came out with my website in the, in the beginning of 2018, this is November 2018 right here, right? So the price of this one, this is one of my favorites, right? It went from $3.50 to right now it's at $7. That's a hundred percent gain. That's just one of them. There's some of them that are 10 X. Now this is the perspective you guys need to understand the mining stocks. They've rallied and they've gone up a lot, right? You would have beaten everything else out there. Every Fang stock, every new IPO, everything. If you just would have bought mining stocks, but in, in the perspective of things, this is just the beginning. L let's take a look at the all-time high for this one. It was at $15. $16, right? Sixteen. Let's say $16. It's going to go back to its all-time high. And then some. And then a lot some. Like, if gold goes... Okay, so I... I truly believe gold's going minimum five thousand dollars an ounce i know it sounds crazy but it's not it's not the amount of money they're gonna have to print to keep this bubble uh inflated and not just the u.s every country in the world this is global this is what globalization is causing central banks if gold just goes to five thousand dollars an ounce right and silver goes to three hundred dollars an ounce and it's all-time high was like a hundred bucks or something i forgot um, this particular mining stock, you could expect it to go to like a hundred dollars easily, easily. Okay. So if, and it's different for every mining stock, it depends on the reserves or grade, uh, the grade of metals they're extracting from the ground, um, you know, their, their debt their revenue their um their cost to revenue and there was a good question about eroi which is energy energy return on investment and i explained to him i'll talk about that in a second but listen if okay so the all-time high of gold was like two thousand dollars in 2011 right so if it goes to five thousand that's that's like another 150% on top of the value of gold. But what that means for the mining stocks is they're not just going to go to their all-time high. They're going to surpass it probably double to triple the all-time high. Especially once the market goes into a bubble. Because uh, gold and silver will go into a bubble. It's going to be like a huge speculative frenzy towards the end. You have to understand the retail investor doesn't even think about gold. They don't even think it's an investment because of uh, schooling. And that was done on purpose, guys. It really was. Um, and it, there's nothing exciting about gold and silver. It's not like cryptos. It's not like tech stocks. It's not like tech companies, growth companies with fancy man. You know, it's not like Elon Musk's. Tesla, Neuralink, and all that BS. You know, he, he could barely, he can't even make a tunnel. But people think he, you know, he's going to create Neuralink, which is probably, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's you know, it's not going to happen. Um, uh, the self-driving cars, they're not even, they're, they're going to be, you know, there probably will be self-driving cars in like five, ten years from now. Other companies are doing it, and I think they're going to actually do it. What I'm trying to say is, there's nothing exciting about gold and silver. It's just companies mining metals out of the resources out of the ground. But when gold and silver becomes monetary and becomes the central bank's main reserves like it used to be for thousands of years, because obviously endless credit and endless bubble blowing doesn't work and destroys lives and companies and everything mining stocks are going to become a huge frenzy again and 
your retail investors are going to start talking about it. Like probably, I would say a year, maybe two years from now. Like they're talking about cryptos. Like they were talking about cryptos and then that bubble popped, right? So um, gold and silver, it's not exciting. And that's exactly why it's so, so undervalued. It's the most undervalued asset in the world. In the world. And it still is right now. So, another thing. So, you see the stock, right? You guys have to understand this. If you bought it at $2, right? For math purposes, because I'm making a video. Yeah, okay. Let's just say you bought it at $2. And the stock goes to $200 a share. Well, you just did a, a 100x return, right? Or is that right? <laughs> yes, you just did a 100x return. A thousand percent gain. So if you stuck a thousand dollars into it, went to $200 a share, and you actually timed the peak and sold at the top, right? You would have $100,000. Uh, gains but the problem is you would have had to have bought it at two dollars a share and people like to wait and see how the market starts going up and then they end up buying it at six dollars a share ten dollars a share now if you buy it at ten dollars a share right and it goes to two hundred dollars a share then you only get a 20x return so if you bought it at $10 a share, it went 20x if it goes to $200, right? Versus buying it at $2 a share, it goes 100x. There's a huge difference later on when you cash out. It's the the gains are magnified, right? By hundreds and hundreds tens of hundreds of percent so that's the difference that's why you, that's why catching the bottom you know it's very risky very risky but it's a little different right now because of the certainty if you understand economics and you understand what's going on at a macro level globally and with all the debt see mining companies are risky right but the ones that have survived this previous bear market, they're going to survive now. And not all of them, but most of them, right? And, and I'm not talking exploration. That's different. But the ones that are already mining, they're pulling uh, metals out of the ground. They, they have revenue. They're maybe operating at a loss, but as the, the price of metals keeps going higher, they're going to go they're going to pay off their debt and go into profits. And that's when you see explosive price action in these stocks. Anyways, there's a huge difference from when you buy at $2 and you buy at $10. And if it goes to $200 a share, for example. And that's how you have to look at it. You have to look at it when you're accumulating. You want as many shares as humanly possible. Because later on, it's going to make a huge difference when you take profits it's the difference between taking a profit of like fifty thousand bucks or taking a profit of like a million right also it depends how much money you have to invest in it takes money to make money but even if you only had a couple thousand dollars it, it would make a huge difference if you bought at the bottom versus a little bit higher right so you don't want to miss out on this. Not just that. Listen. Silver. It just broke back above $17. And I told you guys like a month ago or months ago. I've been saying this forever. Once silver gets back above $17, they can't manipulate and rig the market lower. Like it's game over. It's, it's full-blown bull market for metals 
it's look at this huge resistance around seventeen dollars it's breaking above it right now as soon as it shoots up 18 20 bucks it's gonna shoot straight up oh did i say a hundred dollars okay no it was fifty dollars an ounce for silver i don't even know what i was thinking anyways so silver sometimes leads the price of gold okay and as silver breaks into a bull market it's very evident to the world and to wall street and everyone that metals are in a bull market and they're gonna go into a huge bull market that's probably gonna turn into a huge speculative bubble and mania towards the end we're still in the very beginning stages of this right so let me show you a monthly chart it's gonna take out the previous high and I think it could go to 300 bucks that's actually pretty high but we'll see I mean don't take my word for it it's I'm expecting prices like that like three years from now something like that of course there's gonna be inflation though so your fiat money is gonna lose it's gonna get cut in half or like three-fourths so you know if you're not in metals you're gonna take a like huge pay cut like imagine your pay getting cut in half because that's what inflation does it's a tax it's a hidden tax so you know when bread is like 10 bucks a loaf eggs are you know ten dollars fifteen dollars a carton if you're not in metals you're not gonna you're gonna have a very you're gonna have a bad time all right all right let's get into uh also guys go to mmginvest.com go to my website so the markets 600 point drop today it's huge huge drop over two percent on the s p uh let's talk about this uh jackson hole uh where you know these elitists go and they give speeches to each other and plan the future of the rest of us and i'm going to i'm going to talk some truth taking another look at the markets where as you can see they are still down this morning this comes after a series of tweets from president trump where he slammed both federal reserve chair jerome powell and china asking quote who is our bigger enemy jay powell or chairman xi all right, I just wanted you guys to hear that. That is trending on Twitter right now. And uh, so this, look at this. Look at this. This was this morning, 8 a.m. China retaliates. Well, Bullard speaks. Bullard says uh, the trade war is still on with China. China retaliates with a $75 billion, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, no, uh, hike in tariffs on U.S. products. And then Powell speaks a little bit later, like around um, 10 a.m. And Powell, the Fed chairman, right, for the Federal Reserve, he, he was hawkish. That idiot. <laughs> and then he blamed everything on Trump and the trade war and global slowdown. And then he said, "These the recent rate cut is just uh, a mid-cycle rate cut. So he was hawkish. And then Trump comes out and blasts Powell with some tweets. And then the S&P 500 crashes. <laughs> and these idiots are playing with fire. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys why the Fed's doing what they're doing. And why Trump is saying what he's saying. But, you know, the, after the, the speech, uh, Powell came out with a statement to somehow stop the crash in the markets. And uh, Powell will act as appropriate to sustain expansion. And that's just saying, relax st Wall Street, relax stock market. We will cut rates to stop a crash, even though it crashed right after his speech, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know. Dow drop. I'll look at the charts in a second, guys. Here's another tweet. Uh, there was a there was a lot of tweets. Um, the Dow's down 575, 73 points. Perhaps on the news that 
Representative Seth Moulton, whoever that may be, has dropped out of the 2020 presidential race. He's trolling uh, Democrats with the with the drop in the markets. It's kind of funny. Um, so, yeah. All right, here's the Trump tweets. Well, first of all, this is what's pretty much the mainstream uh, narrative. President Trump derides Fed Chair Powell after China announces new tariffs on U.S. goods. And uh, here we go. Our country has lost, stupidly, trillions of dollars with China over many years. They have stolen our intellectual property at a rate of hundreds of billions of dollars a year. And they have, they want to continue. I want, I won't let that happen. We don't need China and frankly would be far better off. Your company's home, your company's home and making your products in the USA. I will be responding to China's tariffs this afternoon. This is a great opportunity for the United States. Also, I am ordering all carriers, including FedEx, Amazon, UPS, and the post office to search for a refuse. As usual, the Fed did nothing. It is incredible that they can speak without knowing or asking what I am doing, which will be announced shortly. We have a very strong dollar and a very weak Fed. I will work brilliantly with both and the U.S. will do great. My only question is, who is our bigger enemy, Jay Powell or Chairman XI? Now the Fed can show their stuff. All right, guys. So what's going on? I think the Fed wants their cake and they want to eat it too. What is happening is you need to understand that the Fed is a part of this globalist agenda. And what is that? That is, they built up China, a lot of U.S. banks, and the, now there's international companies that work there as well. They built it up, and a lot of elitists invested into China. And they got really, really rich, and they plan on China expanding and becoming the next world superpower. And... I have nothing against the Chinese people. It's they're they also have a totalitarian, uh, you know, regime, communist regime, with a social credit system and everything, facial recognition just to get pop out of a vending machine. Anyways, <clears throat> what will happen is what they okay. What the globalists want is to sacrifice the United States. Blame it on Trump. And that's what the Fed wants as well. They're part of that elite group, guys. And this was a plan to sacrifice to you, the U.S., to gut it, to print money, and to... Ben so they not only benefited from the rise of China, they, benef they benefited from blowing a giant bubble in the U.S. economy and stock market. They benefited every way humanly possible. They're going to benefit from the fall as well as they short everything. And they're benefiting from buying gold. They've been buying gold, the central banks. They're, going to, they're benefiting from the collapse of Western civilization. They've even helped it happen physically. They've paid and had boats from the third world import third world refugees from war. That they've also created in the middle in the sandbox, right? In go into Europe. I mean, guys, nothing had not these huge shifts in the world. They were all orchestrated and planned decades of ha ahead, and they're just profiting it, uh, profiting off of it, like you've never could imagine. Their their fallout. Okay. All these elites, they don't care about nation states. They don't care about the West. They don't care about U.S., Europe. They all have bunkers in New Zealand. <laughs> I'm serious. And, in, in, you know, in mega yachts and many uh, small islands and homes. It, and that's fact. It's not. This isn't conspiracy, all right? So 
That's what's happening. And Trump is trying to save the U.S. And he has to do this economic warfare with China. I'm going to talk more in-depthly on a separate video about China and the U.S. Uh, economic warfare. And the Fed right now is shifting blame. They're going to blame this on, on Trump. They're going to blame it on the trade wars. And they're hoping he doesn't get reelected. What is going to happen? You know what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. But the Fed has to do what the markets want. If not, the Fed will get the blame. So they're going to capitulate and print money. But they want the stock market to at least fall like 30%, something in a big way, right? So Trump doesn't get reelected. They need the stock market fall just enough so that your average Joe Schmo and the boomers don't vote for Trump and Trump gets the blame and a Democrat gets into office. The stock, Here's the S&P 500. Let's take it to a weekly chart. It's got a long way to go down, right? Long way. And um, they want it, who knows how, the problem with them, here's 2009 all the way down here. The problem with them playing with fire like this and possibly causing a recession is the Fed probably can't reinflate the economy. So once the stock market falls enough, they can't save it. And then that's the fire the Fed is playing with. And that is what Trump is trying to stop. So the Fed is clearly against Trump. And they are political now. And it's going to get wild. It's going to get crazy. You know what? We don't know what's going to happen. The only thing I do know is that metals are going to go up. There's going to be dips and pullbacks. Who cares? Buy it. By now, by tomorrow, by all the dips, by everything. I don't even know how to trade this at this point. So, that is the situation. So, stay tuned. I'm going to make more videos. The next few videos that I'm going to make are going to be extremely important, extremely interesting. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. Alright guys, smash some likes. Leave anything in the comment section. I will answer your comments. Please share my videos. My channel's not growing anymore. It hasn't been growing for like a while. And that's not by accident. I'm, I've said too much. Please share my channel. It's the only way I'm going to continue to do this. Smash them likes. Until next time, guys. Go to my website. 10% uh, off. Links in the comment section below.